So we're headed to Richmond, Virginia during this Thanksgiving holiday. We decided to go because I'll be home by myself for Christmas while someone else will be in Iowa. So we decided to take this trip. Anything you have to say? We're gonna go to Richmond and go to the, uh, go to the museums. Go to the museums. Yeah, and I'm hopefully, I've been working on this book for the past two weeks now, and I really like Lauren Asher. I think I just like, I'm hitting like a weird reading slump where like the only things I'm paying attention to are audiobooks. Um, so I think I'm reading the audiobook If He Had Been With Me. No, I'm not reading that one, actually. I don't know what, what I'm talking about. Anyway, and I really like Lauren Asher. I just think that I'm in a weird mood. I just started a job two weeks ago. And so my reading has kind of gone down a little bit since starting the job. But hopefully we can still get to reading 50 books this year. Right now I'm at like 41. So I've got to hurry up and pick up the pace. But yeah, we're headed to Richmond, Virginia today. And anything else you have to say, Nick? We're taking Jerry's car. We're taking my car. Follow along. I don't know what else to say. You have anything else that you want to end it with? <laughs> there you go. Hopefully we can leave soon if someone starts packing. I wonder who that someone is. Wonder who it is. <laughs>
So this is a couple of weeks later. Um, I've been gotten pretty busy for the past couple of days, but the two books that I got from the trip is A Holly Jolly Diwali and Christmas Presents, which I'd seen Christmas Presents um, on Instagram when it first came out. And I was going to like choose a bunch of holiday romances, but I kind of realized that I have to put a thriller in there. Like, I feel like if I read straight through romances, I tend to get a little bored of them. So I had to get like a Christmas themed thriller. And Holly Jolly Diwali sounded really interesting. Uh, one thing that I really loved about this book is I love it when they talk about characters who usually follow the book or like follow um, the rules and then they decide to do something where they step out of their comfort zone. I relate to that a lot. And so that's kind of what this book was giving. So I really wanted to get it and read it. I'm going to read this for a later vlog, the Holly Jolly Diwali. But for Christmas presents, I'm going to read it for this vlog. Um, so this book is... I believe it follows a woman who had a tra very traumatic childhood and is now taking care of their like elderly parent. And she's like the surviving victim from a serial killer. And a true crime podcaster comes into her town and is basically trying to mess everything up. But also it's sort of like bringing up old trauma that happened as well as uh, maybe some new things that are going to prop up. It says Madeline's the only surviving victim, Evan Handy, the serial killer convicted for the murder of her best friend and suspected in several other disappearances. Since Handy went to jail, three more young women have gone missing, suggesting that either that there is a copycat at work or that the authorities locked up the wrong man. As the holiday approaches, can I help you? As the holiday approaches and a Blizzard bears down. Madeline and her childhood friend Badger must. Can I help you? And her childhood friend Badger must confront a deadly possibility. In the process, they'll discover a truth more terrible and much closer to home than they ever imagined. So hopefully, that gives some sort of a clear of what this book is about. It's only like it's really short. It's only like 260 pages, so I'm hoping to finish it soon. I haven't started yet. Um, I appreciate your your help in this, Otto. Really appreciate it. So yeah, I'm going to get started reading it. The words are so big, I feel like I'm just going to fly through it. Which is a good thing, because I need to catch up on my reading goal. I'm only at like 42 books out of 50, so this will be a great Christmas speedy read. So it's the next day and I'm about almost halfway done. Hopefully I can finish this book by tomorrow. And I have to say I love the trope of like a podcaster coming in wanting to stir things up that's my favorite trope and it's also been something that's been really prevalent in books that come out this year um, like I said one of my favorite books was I have some questions for you and this book feels similar but also different in some ways like I said it follows Madeline who it reveals that she befriended the man that was a serial killer they went to the same high school he was new to the high school and they became friends um, and even maybe at one point romantic partners. This boy had done something at his previous school that got him kicked out and then he came to the same school that she was in and became part of the friend group. And so it follows their friendship, but also in current times, her dealing with the potential of this podcast getting made and maybe new secrets being revealed. But then it's also very clear that she has some secrets as well. And so that's so far what I've gotten in this book and I'm enjoying it. Um, it definitely has that like takes place in Christmas so there's no like Christmas feel it's more about Christmas and like the holiday reminder of the tragedy that happened around Christmas time Christmas is more like the date of like the tragic events 
So now I wasn't expecting a very Christmas theme and like a thriller, but that's kind of what Christmas plays a part into it. Um, so I think it's the perfect like December book because you definitely get in the feel of like what this town would be like. And yeah, I'm liking it so far. Like I said, I'm about 40% of the way done. There are, there was one quote in here that I wanted to read where it says, it talks about trauma, which I think is a really interesting way that this author is talking about trauma in particular in this book. It says, the aftermath of trauma, of victimhood, is part of the national dialogue now. We all know its insidious effects, how the body keeps score, how the tentacles of suffering reach for our future, roping us always back into the past. How a few bars of a song or a ringing phone or the sound of a chair scraping over hard before or whatever that personal trigger might be can bring us back to a moment in time we wish we could forget. When people talk less about shame, the whispering wrath that breathes in our ears about how you deserve what happened to you and didn't deserve to survive it. It can wrap around you, pushing air from your lungs, stealing your voice and draining the light from the sky. Just great absolutely great Another thing I'm noticing about books like these is there's now a lot of books in the thriller space that are talking about the ethics of true crime, like the ethics of going deep into someone's trauma and their story and telling their story and this sort of like investigative journalism from people who don't have a journalist background or people who are exploiting people of their pain, which I do find to be an interesting take. Um, because I think that true crime is now turned into this very like entertainment business, even though it is essentially talking about the worst time in people's lives. So that's something I'm really liking about this book is it is talking about the ethics behind talking to people and opening them up and getting them to talk about some of the deepest, darkest things that have ever happened to them. And what that says about society and how we like how we discuss these stories how we indulge in these stories and the ethics behind that and the ethics behind people who also create these stories so that's something that i'm liking about a lot of thriller books this year So I finished Christmas presents. It is my 45th book of the year. Will she get to 50? I'm not sure about that, but we're still trying. So I have to say I enjoyed this book. I definitely wanted a little break from reading a bunch of those like cute romances. Like the two main genres that I read are romance and thrillers. I was reading a lot of romances, so I needed a break. And this was like the perfect book, I feel, to like open up Christmas without going the traditional romance route. Um, I would have to say, I think because it's a novella and I'm so used to reading long book books that some of the more like side plot stories were a little weak in this book. But again, it's a novella, so you have to take that with the fact that it's going to be short and there's a lot of things that are going to be wrapped up that you're going to feel are be wrapped up kind of quickly. But overall, I thought it was good. It had topics that discussed things like the ethics of true crime, um, but also how true crime can be both hurtful and helpful for people who are dealing with trauma. Um, There's also a side plot of a woman who is escaping harm, um, also dealing with a whole community, dealing with this collective trauma and how they handle it, but also the individual, Madeline, who you know, the survivor's guilt that she feels, the fact that she hasn't stayed so stunted in her life because she felt this guilt for surviving this thing that her friends didn't survive. And so all those elements of it, I think, are really, really good and makes Christmas presents like the perfect Christmas thriller. Um, Of course, there's not a bunch of like 
Christmas joy, but it's also multi-layered. And that's what I really enjoyed about the book. But this is my 45th book. And now I'm on to read other Christmas romances. Um, and hopefully I don't get sick of romance, but I have some thrillers on the side just in case the like happy love love gets on my nerves. Because sometimes it does when I'm not in the mood for it. But yeah, I think Christmas Presents is a great novella. It's a very quick read. I tab some of it because there's some parts that I wanted to talk about that I've already kind of discussed here. Um, but yeah, that's it for this reading blog slash Christmas vlog. And uh, hope you have a good day and I'll see you later.